and the topic for our devotion today is the sanctified believer and our subtopic is following the footsteps of Jesus. All right. First, I want to start with by asking a question, what is sanctification? And the answer for that is that sanctification is the process by which something or someone is set apart for God's special use and purpose. And what does it mean to be a sanctified believer? Well, a sanctified believer is one who is set apart for God's special use and purpose. Right? And I am now going to look into the positional sanctification versus progressive sanctification. And no worries, you will you will understand what I'm talking about as I go along. The positional sanctification um, speaks to the fact that a person is set apart when they have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Right? And this salvation made them into a new creature making them sanctified. And two scriptures I have, two scripture verses I have particularly. First, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10, says, by the which we, by the which will we are, sorry, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all, right? So that's what I am speaking about, that position of sanctification, which has come from the sacrifice which Jesus made by being crucified on the cross and dying for our sins and being raised again from the dead on the third day so that we can receive salvation and have eternal life. When we receive that, then we are we receive a sanctification that comes along with that. And becoming a believer, we will become set apart for God's special use and for his purpose, right? We're set apart, we're different, we stand out as believers. And another verse I have also is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5. It says, even when we were dead in sins, we came to us together with Christ by grace, uh, by grace ye are saved. So that also speaks to the same salvation I was speaking about, which allows us to become a believer and be sanctified. And I'm going to move on to into what I'm talking about as progressive sanctification. And I did say it earlier. No, did I say it? No, however, progressive sanctification really speaking about the process by which a believer lives a life and attains unto a sanctified life. By that I mean living for God and obeying him and doing what he says and all that is required to meet God's requirements and his standards for our life. Right? And as we continue to grow spiritually, and read God's word and meditate upon it, then we become closer and closer to the um, being a, a Christian who is living a sanctified life. Because you can be a Christian, you know, but you're not necessarily living a sanctified life. Right? Because you can be a Christian, but your lifestyle is not a sanctified life. Right? You, you are a Christian, but when people see you daily, your behavior, your attitudes do not speak to the fact that you're a Christian. You have to make people have to wonder whether or not you are a Christian. So even though you're a Christian, your lifestyle, your life is not really, you're not really living a sanctified life, even though you're a Christian. So that's why we have, as we grow as Christians and mature spiritually, that is really the progressive sanctification. As we progress through the Christian life, we're mature and attain and to expectations that God has for us. And I have verses now which I'm going to share on this. First verse I have here is Leviticus chapter 20, verse 7. It says, Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy, for I am 
the Lord your God. And these verses actually are really showing us the different ways in which we can attain um, unto a sanctified life, right? Through that progressive sanctification as we live our lives as Christians. Now this verse here in Leviticus 20 verse 7, that says that we should, that says sanctify yourselves therefore and be holy for I am the Lord your God. This verse actually shows that sanctification or sanctity and holiness goes hand in hand, right? Because sanctification, those a sanctified believer, right, will also be holy, right? But sanctification really is, also speaks to that purity, right, and that perfection for which God calls us for. That when we're sanctified, it means that we have set up or we have to be set up or and we have to be pure, right? And the next verse I have now is, oh, Leviticus chapter 20, verse eight. And you shall keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord which sanctify you. So it's the one way to attain unto a sanctified life is to keep God's statutes which is his commandments, right? Keep them in memory, right? And do them. So not just, not just know them and understand them, but actually do them. Because as we observe God's commandments and we read about them and hear them and meditate upon them, then we also have a responsibility not only to do that, but to actually obey them, right? Do what it says. Because it's as we obey what God commands, what he requires of us. And that's what we will progress through the Christian life in the way which he intended for us to, right? Uh, the next verse I have here now is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. It says, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornic fornication. Sorry. And the reason why this one specifically was brought up here is because it, it speaks to the significance of sexual sin. Right? That is really something that is really significant and has really dire consequences. Right? And that's something that we are always really seriously warned against. And that's really a big part of the sanctification. I mean, everything, everything and every sin needs to be purged out of us so that we can be sanctified. But that specifically carries a really certain level of significance to it, right? And that's why the Lord, and that's why that was specifically pointed out in that verse in particular. And the next verse I have here is Romans chapter 6, verse 19. It says, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members, servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now yield your members, servants to righteousness and to holiness. So we are seeing here that we are called here to yield ourselves unto righteousness, right? and unto holiness. It really means to give ourselves over to it, right? Allow it to take control of us, right? We allow it to pull us towards it. And we, we should just move towards it and allow it to pull towards it, pull us towards it. It's something that we should gravitate towards, towards, right? So we should yield to it, right? We should move towards it. We should um, seek it out and we should find it. Right? That's what we are supposed to be doing here when it talks about yielding our members to righteousness and unto holiness. And the next verse I have here is actually Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. It says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear 
and Trembly. So first here we see um we see obedience to God, right? That's a big part of obtaining unto a sanctified life. We have to be obedient to God. Because only through obeying God that we really will be sanctified. Because if we don't obey God, then there's no way we can be sanctified because we will be we will not be a part of the purpose of which God has for us and his anointing and his blessing and his power will not be upon us when we, if we don't obey him. So we really have to be obedient to God in order to attain unto that sanctified life. Well, not only that, but we should, we should work out our salvation with fear and with trembling. Right? We should examine ourselves and see if we are in the faith Right? We should go before God and examine ourselves and see if we're in the faith. And any wicked way that we find in us or anything, we should allow God to deal with it and allow God to purge us. And if we find that when we go before God and we examine ourselves and we are not in the faith, we go to God with the, with the fear of Him, which is the reverence and respect. We do that self examination with that fear for God, that reverence and respect for God. If we find that we are not, then we get right with God, we deal with it, and we allow God to come into our lives, right? So that is what we're, that's another step into attaining unto the sanctified life. And the next verse I have now is Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So this year we need to, and if we're going to live a sanctified life as believers and be that sanctified believer, we have to understand that it is God which worketh in us, both to do. All right, so I'm reading about the verse. We have to understand that this verse here, which says, For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. If we understand this, then it means that we will submit to God because we have to submit to God in order to do what is right and what is pleasing unto him. We have to understand that this Christian life is not our own, right, but it's the Lord's, and we should submit unto him as he is the one who gives us the very desire to obey him and please him. So it's not of our own self, of our own strength, but we have to depend totally on God, right? Or to submit ourselves to God and depend totally on Him. Once we can do this, then we are on our way to living that sanctified life and being that sanctified believer. And then the next verse I have is Galatians, Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. This I say. Then walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We're going to live a sanctified life of walk in the spirit, of walk in the spirit, that we should not fulfill the lust of the flesh, as the word, as the word says. We have to walk in the spirit of God. We have to ask God to help us to obey His word and His every command, and to put his power and anointing upon us and do everything that we do as unto God and with God's spirit upon us. And we have to ensure that we do not yield to temptation, right? We have to ensure not to yield to temptation, but to diligently seek after God and follow what he says and obey him. And whenever temptation comes up, in our face to try and distract us and get us to yield to it, then we should be able to fight it off with the scripture and God's word, right? As we should be praying every day and putting on the armor of God on us every day so that we'll be able to withstand all the wiles and all the fiery darts of the enemy, right? So as we do this, then we will be able to walk in the spirit and we will not yield unto temptation, but we will continue to progress right, towards being that sanctified believer. Right.
All right, next verse I have now is First Peter chapter two verse twenty one. It says, "For even here unto were he called because of Christ, also suffered for us, leaving us an example that he should follow his steps." Yes. So this is where this is where the subject actually came in about about. Um, Following the footsteps of Jesus, right? This is where that some topic actually came in. Because to be a sanctified life, living a sanctified life and doing all of these, of these things, we need to be following the footsteps of Jesus, right? Jesus came on earth, right? God manifested himself in the form of flesh as his son, Jesus Christ. And he came and he lived a life, right? And what, uh, it was recorded in the Bible so that we today can have it as an example, so that we can follow that example. So we now need to follow the example of Jesus Christ, the lifestyle that he lived and all that he did. We need to follow his example because it is the guide for our life and it is what we are to follow. It is there. It's not just in the Bible, just as a story just to be told and read and that's it, but it's in the Bible because it's an example for us, right? Because all the things that we are commanded to do, the example is there for us to follow. So we just need to follow it. We need to ask God to help us to really read and meditate upon it and really understand the significance of the example that was set before us by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And once again, do that. And once again, follow it then. Trust me, we will attain unto all these things. We will be able to do all these things and we will live that sanctified life. And when we are... as uh, Oh, one, thing, one more thing I wanted to say is that yeah, as I was talking about Jesus, I mean, yes, God manifesting himself in the flesh as Jesus Christ. I have actually have some scripture there to back it up as well. I'm going to share them right now. First scripture I have here is John chapter 1, verse 1. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then John chapter 1, verse 14 says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John chapter 10, verse 30 says, I and my Father are one. So from all these verses here, we see that in the beginning was the word and the word was God. And then we see move further to state that after it states that the other verse moves further and says that, and the word, which is God, was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as only because of the Father. So we see here that God himself was manifested in the form of flesh as his son, Jesus Christ, as I was saying earlier. And that's why the last verse says that I and my father are one because he and his son, is one because it's God himself who was manifested in the flesh as Jesus Christ. And we see that the significance of that and, the, and then doing that, then he laid down the example for which we are to follow as we see here. And when we are sanctified, you no, know, what happens is that we will be able to overcome, or right? we will be an overcomer and we will be able to attain unto perfection, right? And verse Revelation chapter 21, verse 7 states that he that overcome it shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. So we will become an overcomer and we'll be able to inherit all that the Lord God has in store for us. Right? And we have the privilege of being called his son. And verse Matthew 5, verse 48, which speaks about the perfection, says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So we see that we'll also be able to attain unto that perfection, right? 
that living that sanctified, progressing through that life of sanctification and attaining that, that sanctified life, being the sanctified believer, we will be able to attain unto the perfection, right? Living a lifestyle where God can actually consider us as being perfect. Right? As we know that being perfect here really speaks to the, a certain standard of living where we are we do not have any habitual sin in our lives, right? We are quoted blameless, right? And being considered perfect by God, it doesn't mean unmute yourself, Theo. You're muted. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't realize where that was. All right. We you said um, being considered perfect by God, right? That's where you were. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. I was saying that <clears throat> Athena and that lifestyle where that standard of living where we're considered perfect for of God because we, we do not have any habit of sin in our lives. Yes, we may we are human and we may make mistakes here and there, but we are, we are quick to confess our sin and we forsake them. And there's no sin in our life. It's actually a habitual sin. But rather, our lives are such that we are considered blameless. Right? And that perfection also speaks. It's just really a privilege when you think about it. The fact that a, a human being like you and I can really be considered perfect by God. Like that just shows how much God actually loves us and values us. It just shows how much we worth the significance that the time and effort that he invested in making us, that he would privilege us so much to see us as that. Because it really that he set a standard that we can follow. And once we follow this standard, then he will consider us perfect. Right? It's just a, it's just like you I know that teachers always well, some teachers say that, that there's no such thing as being perfect, so they don't give students a perfect grade, right? But the thing about that is that the perfect, uh, the perfect there, nothing in the world is perfect. However, something can be perfect according to a standard, right? So if you, according to what is expected from you, for example, you get a particular assignment apart according to what is expected from you. You can perfectly meet that expectation, right? And once you perfectly meet that expectation, then you will get perfect marks, right? So the same thing, we got, got to set a standard for us to follow, right? And once we are following it the way we should, and we are doing and attaining unto everything that he said that we should do, and living the lifestyle that he calls us to live, right? That lifestyle of blamelessness according to his standard, then he will consider us perfect, right? So we really need to strive and understand the, per the perfection and what it really means and know that it is something that we can achieve. It's not unachievable. If it was not so, if it was not possible, then the Lord would not allow, would not tell us that we should do that because the Lord is not going to say anything that we cannot do. Any, everything that the Lord tells us to do is possible and can be done. Right? So really thank God for that revealing all of these things to us and bringing the light. Because I really, I myself am blessed by this too. Right? Because the Lord really was speaking to all of us, including me. I really want to thank him for that. Right? I'm going to pray now. Uh, Lord, God, I was coming for you right now. Lord God, I just thank you, Lord God, for your goodness and your mercy. Lord God, I just thank you, Lord, for the gift of salvation, God, by which we all can receive eternal life, Lord God. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, for all that you have done for us, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that we can live a sanctified life as, life as believers, Lord God. And Lord, we can be considered perfect by you, Lord God. Help us all, Lord God, to, Lord, God, aim to live a life, God, Lord, where which we will be considered perfect by you, Lord God. Lord, that life of blamelessness, God, before you, Lord God, in your sight, Lord God. Lord, I pray, Lord God, you help us to understand, Lord God, it's possible to achieve it, Lord God. Help us to, Lord, aim towards it, Lord God. Help us to obey you, Lord God, at all times, Lord, and surrender ourselves to you, 
Lord God, I pray and I thank you, Jesus. Lord, help us to hide your word in our heart, Lord God, because by hiding your word in our heart, Lord God, that we will become who you want us to become, Lord God, as just for one verse is, is that this book of God shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate day and day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success, Lord God. Lord, if we just hide your word in our heart, God, and observe to do according to all that is written therein, Lord God, then, Lord God, we will truly attain unto all that is, Lord, that you have to have for us, Lord, and we will truly attain unto being a sanctified believer, Lord God, and Lord, attain unto the perfectness, Lord, for which you call for us, Lord God, and Lord, you, our, the purpose for which you have for us, God, will be fulfilled, and Lord God, we will come into the fullness of everything that you have in store for us, Lord, Lord. we will not miss out on every anything, Lord God Almighty, Lord, it was I understand, Lord God, that even in these times that we're living in, Lord, we need people, Lord God, who will stand up for you, Lord God, and who will be the example, Lord God, so that others can follow, Lord God, who will follow your example, Lord God, so that others can, Lord, see the light, Lord God, and come to you, Jesus, and Lord, that they can, God, become children of God, and they can also become Make disciples, Lord God. Lord, so help us, Lord God, to ourselves, Lord God, to be used by you, Lord God Almighty. Lord, help us to seek your kingdom first, Lord God Almighty. And everything else, Lord, will be added unto us, Lord God. Lord, I just thank you, Lord God, for everyone that is here in this now, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that you'll just bless us, Lord God, because each and every one of us, Lord God, to Lord, spend some time, Lord God, to Lord examine the scriptures, Lord God, and get a even better understanding of all of this, Lord God, because there's always more to learn, God, and always more to understand, Lord God. No matter how much we go in the scriptures, God, and read and pray and meditate, Lord God, we can never get enough because every time, Lord God, there's something new, no matter how much time, Lord God, there's always something you're always more. It's infinite, Lord God. So it cannot be exhausted. So help us to understand that, Lord God, and help us to have a zeal and passion for your word, Lord God. I pray and I thank you. I just thank you for all these things, Lord. I just bless everyone through, Lord God Almighty. And just cause us to all step into the purpose, Lord, for which you have for us, Lord God. I pray. I thank you for all these things, God. In Jesus' name. Amen.